Hey photographers, welcome back. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be showing you how to process raw images. Now if you don't already shoot in raw, I'm going to definitely encourage you to do so. That's one of the biggest advantages that you get out of using a professional camera, is having the availability of using the raw data from your sensor. So you definitely want to be shooting in raw because that's going to allow you to take the biggest advantage of all of that information that's in that picture so that you can go ahead and alter it in post and take the biggest advantage again by shooting in raw. So what we're going to do today is we're going to use the Adobe Suite and we're going to use Bridge, Camera Raw, and Photoshop. We're also going to be using some Topaz Labs software and we're going to be using specifically Topaz Denoise AI and Topaz Sharpen AI. So what we're going to do here guys is we're just going to go through three different images that I've selected. I've chosen a macro shot of a bee, a shot of the red-tailed hawk here, and we have a shot of a mushroom. So we're going to start with the macro B shot here. Um, we're in Adobe Bridge right now. So what we're going to do is just right click and go to open in camera raw. So that's going to be step one, bring it into camera raw. Now we want to do three different things here. Um, and I'm going to show you why we don't do any of the other stuff until later on. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the profile that we have selected. So you have landscape, neutral, portrait, standard, and vivid. I like to uh, use landscape. It gives me the colors. Um, and the contrast that I'm really looking for right off the bat and then you can go ahead and play with the white balance Auto's terrible. So what I'll do is go with as shot and just cool it off a little bit there Okay, so I've got my white balance where I want it. I've got my profile selected. So we're good here We're not going to do anything as far as exposure contrast highlights shadows whites blacks texture clarity dehaze vibrance or saturation We're not going to do anything yet with this image there. So we're going to go to optics and we're going to make sure that we have the profile correction selected. It's already done automatically. Um, and we're going to make sure that we have the appropriate lens profile for the lens that we used. Um, and once we have the profile and chromatic aberrations applied, we're good to go. So what we're going to do then is we're going to go to step two, hit open. And that's going to bring us into actual Photoshop. So now that we've made those couple of changes to white balance and stuff like that, we've now brought it into full on Photoshop where we're going to start using the Topaz software. So what we're gonna do is denoise this image. Now this image doesn't have a lot of noise in the first place. Maybe a little bit of grain if you really zoom in there. It's ISO 200 using a flash, so not a lot of noise in the first place, but we're gonna use this software anyway. I'm gonna show you why. We're gonna to go to Filter, Topaz Labs, and we're gonna to go to Denoise AI. That's gonna pull this image into the Denoise AI software. So we're going into that software now, and here we go. So again, what we're going to do here is you've got three different options. You've got Denoise AI, AI Clear, and Low Light. So Low Light is if we don't want any sharpness applied. AI Clear is pretty much your most dumbed down version with only a few different options to change. And Denoise AI is going to apply some sharpness and also give you a little more customizable control over what we're going to do. Now you can hit Auto. It'll give you an idea of where it wants it to go. I'm going to go ahead and do Remove Noise at 5 and do Enhance Sharpness at 10 because I don't want it to be as aggressive it wanted to do it at 57 and we've got a recover original detail set to 5 color noise reduction set to 2 we're gonna hit update it's gonna generate a preview for us and let us see what that looks like so then we're gonna be able to basically swipe using this little line here and we can see that you know the sharpness is being applied to the hair and everything especially along like the abdomen of the B here as well as you can see that that little bit of granular patterning that you were seeing um, from the noise of ISO 200 there is, is being eliminated. So it's denoising it nicely. Um, we're getting a nice little bit of sharpness added to it. And overall, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is just hit apply. That's gonna go ahead and apply these changes and then bring us right back into Photoshop here. So this will happen quicker or slower depending on how fast your computer is. Um, but it's, we've got a pretty beefy one going here, so it's going to happen pretty quickly. Um, once it's done, we're going to go right back to Photoshop here, like I said, and we're back to Photoshop. So now we've got it denoised, we've got it sharpened. We want to now go to Filter and go to Camera Raw Filter. That's going to bring us right back to Camera Raw, and that's going to allow us to now make any types of changes that we want to exposure levels or anything now that we've already denoised the image. So if I wanted to lift the shadows a little bit, or I wanted to pull the highlights back a little bit, you know, maybe add a little bit of vibrance, doesn't really need it, maybe pull pull vibrance down a little bit, actually, I think looks better here. Um, so pull the vibrance down by 11, 
Uh, we pulled the highlights back a little, recovered a little bit of shadow detail, and overall I'm pretty happy here, so I'm gonna hit OK, and boom, we're right back into Photoshop again. We can hit C, we can crop in on where we want our final image to be, and I'm pretty happy there. So at this point, we've now used, you know, Topaz Denoise AI software. I wouldn't use any more sharpening. We could choose to use the Denoise AI sharpening on this image, but for this one, this is sharp enough. I wouldn't want to do it because again, you can go too far with this software and then you're going to get degradation to your image if you push things too far and it's, it's all a balancing act. Okay, so if I'm happy with the image where I am now, what I would do is just go to File, Save As, and I would just export that out to wherever I want. Go to my PNG files, go ahead and go to, uh, you know, name it, send it out as whatever type of file that I want. Um, but namely, I would do a PNG file if I'm going to be sharing it to social media. So, okay, so that's it for that first image. So let's go right back to Bridge, and let's go to the second image. Let's go ahead and check out this shot of the red tail hawk that I have. So we're going to, again, open it up into Camera Raw, and first thing we're going to do is check our profiles. I usually default into landscape. I like the way landscape profile looks, but you might like a different one and that's fine. Whatever, you know, your personal preference is. So I'm going to go with landscape. Um, again, I'm not going to touch any of this stuff yet. Um, other than my white balance. Let's see what auto. Okay. I like auto here. Added a little bit of like brown golden kind of hue too. I'm going to stick with auto for white balance. We're going to stick with landscape. Again, um, you do want to make sure that you have your user profile correction set and your remove chromatic aberration set. Mine are done by default. This was the Tamron 100 to 400 lens. Um, so once we have that all good to go, we're going to hit open. We're going to bring ourselves right into Photoshop again with those changes applied. So here we go. So because this is a bird shot, we want to crop in on this image. Well, I do because I want the bird to be larger in the frame. So we're going to hit C and we're going to crop the living daylights out of this thing. Whew. Boom, we're going to bring it to something like that. We're going to level it with that horizon that we have just a little bit better. And there we go. Okay, so we cropped the heck out of that thing. And all right, so we've got it cropped. We've got our white adjustments done and stuff like that. So we're going to go filter. Topaz Labs, and we're going to go to Denoise. We're going to Denoise first, and that's what we pretty much always want to do. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the actual subject, the bird here, and let's see what it would want to do automatically. Okay, I'm going to actually, you know, there is a little bit of noise in this one, so I'm going to do 10 on remove noise, 20 on sharpness, 5 recover original detail, 2 color noise reduction. We're going to hit update and see what that looks like. Now I want you to take a look at this. This one usually works pretty good. So look at the talons, look at the face, look at the beak. Look as I pass across here and we see the preview. And look at that, it sharpens right up. Look at the detail that's coming back into the chest and specifically underneath those wings as well. Oh, I moved it. Hold on, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna have to uh, update that preview again. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it across. Look at how much sharper and how much nicer that detail looks, especially in the wings and in the chest there the talons, the beak, everything looks nicer, um, as well as getting that little bit of noise just removed. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit apply. It's going to apply those changes and bring us right back into Photoshop again. So here we go. Photoshop. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now we're going to do filter and we're going to go to camera raw filter, bring us back to camera raw. And this is where we're going to do some exposure changes. So let's zoom in again on the bird here. And we're just going to do some shadow recovery. Now, after you've denoised things, you're going to have way better ability to recover your shadows and your files because you've dealt with the noise that would have been there, okay? Now, the R6 files already are awesome at shadow recovery, so we just bumped it up to 75, which is insane, and it looks fine. Um, so, awesome. Cool, cool. We're going to add maybe just a little bit of vibrance, touch of contrast. Um, blacks I'll bring down by, like, one, and... I'm pretty happy with that. One more thing I'm going to do here is zoom way in on this bird's eye. And I'm going to create a mask. And what we're going to do is just pop it around that eye. Okay. And then what I want to do is just lift that exposure by one stop. 
and that's just to make it so you'll that eye will pop out a little bit better okay so once we've done that I'm gonna back it off all right that's looking pretty cool I'm pretty happy with how that looks so maybe I'll pull those highlights back just a hair okay just a little hair and then I'm gonna hit okay those are gonna apply and pull me back into Photoshop so now we're gonna go ahead and again I'm pretty happy with the sharpness level of this image and that's something I want to talk about it's still really really important that you're still really focused on the basics of photography right because the better the source image that you're getting out of your camera the better this software is gonna be able to do for you if you have a totally ruined image from motion blur it's not going to be able to fix it so you're still going to want to be aiming for getting the absolute best results out of your camera by really focusing on the principles of photography that's still going to be crucial this stuff is not going to take a terrible picture and make it great it's going to take a great picture and help refine it to make it perfect but it's not going to fix bad photography okay so that's important for you to understand so what we're going to do now again i'm happy with the sharpness levels of this but if I wanted to, we could go to Filter, we could go to Topaz Labs, and then we can go to Topaz Sharpen AI. Again, it's just going to pull us into the Sharpen AI software. Very similar to the other one. Now, um, again, we can zoom in on our subject here. And again, you'll get a little degradation to the image because, again, we've cropped in and we've got, you know, pretty tight... Uh, resolution from the crop already and then we're you know losing even more resolution by zooming in so it looks a little pixelated but that's okay the end result won't look like that now you have three options with this software you have motion blur out of focus and too soft okay so again three options that you can try to address whatever type of issue that you're having with the image you know a lot of times when it's birds moving it might be motion blur motion blur and out of focus are much more aggressive than too soft okay so the first thing I want to show you is how to create a mask we're gonna go down to the mask tab and what it's gonna do is try to find the subject for you automatically let's see if it does it bird okay it did a decent job let's help it though we're gonna just fill in the gaps here that it missed a little bit and then what I'm gonna do is right click and go to sub and I'm just gonna trim the fat off the mask here anywhere that it might have kind of bled over that I don't like. I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna to go to Edge Aware, so that it's gonna detect the edges of this hopefully, and we're gonna hit Apply Mask. That way the sharpening isn't gonna to apply to the whole image, it's only going to apply to the bird here, okay? So again, we can swipe across it and you can see that it is sharpening um, the images underneath the wing here and in the chest, and even in the face and the towns a little bit. Um, it is sharpening, okay, and you can go ahead and change. This was just the auto settings of 67 at blur and 28 at suppressed noise. You can change it. You can do very noisy, very blurry. There's all different levels of aggressiveness to this software, so you can play with those and see how they come out. The thing about this is if it over sharpens, and what I'm seeing a little bit here, especially along these lines here in the in the wing, whoops, um, is going to be... It's making the preview again, there we go. It's gonna be that I'm seeing what looks like chromatic aberration, really. It's, you get like these green and red lines. Again, we're zoomed way in, so I could probably apply this, it would look fine. You know, in fact, let's do that. We're gonna apply it and let it, you know, apply to that. It's gonna make those changes. Again, this is faster or slower depending on the uh, power of your computer. But once this is done, it's gonna bring us right back to Photoshop, and that looks great. Again, all of that degradation is because I was zoomed in so far and it was falling apart because of the pixels, right? Because we cropped in hard already. We're probably looking at like almost a five megapixel image already just from that crop. So again, I've sharpened it with Sharpen AI. I've used Denoise AI. Um, we used Adobe Photoshop to uh, kind of refine this image out and we've got our end result. Again, here I would just go to File, Save As, save it to wherever I wanted to, probably as a PNG file, maybe a JPEG file, depending on where I wanted to share it. So, okay, so that's the end of image number two. Let's go back to bridge, and let's go to the third image. That's the mushrooms here. This one's going to be quick. So, again, right-click, open in camera raw. And I'm pretty happy with the image out of camera, right? So let's see what auto would give me. I like auto better. Let's go to landscape because I love landscape. Cool. Happy with that. So then um, maybe just a touch of vibrance. Maybe pull the shadows up a hair. I don't really need to do much to this, but let's go ahead and open it up. And bring it right into Photoshop again. And here we are. And let's go to Filter. Topaz Labs. Denoise AI. We're going to go to Denoise AI software real quick. 
um, we're gonna zoom out and look at it and again you can see a little bit of noise here so we're just gonna uh, what's what's auto want auto wants that I don't want it that much sharpened it always wants to aggressively sharpen I'm gonna bring sharpening down to 10 uh, 15 and remove noise to 10 and hit update and let's see what that's gonna look like it's gonna generate our preview for us again same thing it's gonna do this faster or slower depending on your computer this software can be a little bit resource intensive so you will want a little bit of a beefy computer to run this stuff really quickly um, again we can just now grab this and zoom across see that it is sharpening up that image especially like on the lines here in the mushroom as well as getting rid of any noise that was in the background there that looks good so we're gonna go ahead and hit apply and honestly at this point with something that looks good and again that's the goal here is to get the best looking images out of your camera so that you don't need to rely on this software this software can help band-aid things it can help with sharpening with denoising I love this software it's super powerful I use it on almost all of my images but you don't want to rely on it you do still need to really focus on the principles of photography to get the best possible image out of camera I can't stress that enough the better the picture looks from the source the better that this type of software is going to be able to do with that image okay so again this would be a finished image I would again just go to file save as and that would be the end of this I'd save it as either a PNG or a JPEG again guys if you think this helps you in any way think about going below subscribing clicking the notification bell and I'll see you guys on my next video